The Higher Power of Lucky, Chapter Thirteen, Bisu. Because Bridget and her mother were always sending each other bisous, which means kisses, when they talked on the phone, Lucky figured that French people kiss more than regular people. One thing Bridget always did before Lucky went to bed was she came into Lucky's canned ham trailer, and sat on the narrow bed along the wall. And Lucky sat on her lap the same way you'd sit on a chair. Bridget hugged her strongly from behind and put her cheek against Lucky's cheek. And when she talked, her、uh, and when she talked, her chin poked Lucky's shoulder. Even though it was babyish to sit on someone on on any on anyone's lap, Lucky was okay with being wrapped privately in Bridget's arms. She liked having her face beside Bridget's and smelling the clean air smell of her. In those times, she knew there were parts to the job of guardian that Bridget liked a lot, and hugging Lucky was one of them. And that made Lucky's heart fill up with molecules of hope and pump them through her veins. So that night, after Bridget came home with her good as new parsley grinder, Lucky brushed her teeth. Put on her short summer nighty and waited, but Bridget did not come. Lucky went into the kitchen trailer. Bridget sat, cross-legged at the formica table, one hand under her chin, the other clicking the mouse. A booklet was propping up next to the laptop. Lucky stuck her head into the tiny freezer, which contained two miniature ice cube trays, a Tupperware bowl full of more ice cubes. And a small plate of frozen grapes, she said, "I'm ready for bed now." Without turning her head, Bridget said, "Lucky, please close the door of the freezer. I am following my lesson." What lesson? asked Lucky, thinking how odd it was to study after you finished school. Her report on the life cycle of the ant was finished and ready to be turned in tomorrow, although the glued ants on the last page. Would not get a smiley face from Mrs. McBeam for neatness. She grabbed an ice cube from the Tupperware bowl, took a deep breath of cold air, and closed the freezer. Lucky, my puss," said Bridget, peering at the screen, then at the booklet. "You must allow me to finish this without an interruption. Why do you call me your flea anyway?" Lucky said. Rubbing the ice cube over her forehead and cheeks, because it is—is is it because I bite you and suck your blood, or what? Oh la 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 la! When Bridget was a little bit upset, upset, like the time Lucky accidentally squeezed most of the French mustard out of the tube, she clicked her tongue and said, "Oh la la." When she was frustrated, like the time Lucky spilled. Dry jello on the floor, and a trillion ants came inside during the night. Bridget said, "Oh la 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 la," and when she was pretty mad, like when the monthly check came late, Bridget said, "Oh la 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 la." Lucky continued, even though the four la las made her nervous. It is because I bother you and make you itch. Do I give you bumps on your skin, rubbing the back of her neck? With ice, Lucky moved toward Bridget. Bridget slammed close the lid of her computer with one hand and stood up, blocking Lucky's view of the booklet. Lucky, I cannot think when you talk so much, bitties, silly stuff. Bridget yanked a ragged wire mesh fly sweater from a peg and slapped it hard against the table edge. A fly took off from the spot and circled overhead. Bridget tried to swat it in flight. That stupid fly, she said. She always escapes. She clapped the sweater back on its wall hook, thinking that a real mother would never be so mean and that a real mother would share all her secrets, especially the secret of her mysterious lessons and the secret of her passport. Lucky took the fly sweater. Waited until the fly landed, tapped it slightly, and scooped it scooped it up, flattering. She opened the screen door and shook the fly off into the hot night. 
hooking the sweater back on its peg. Lucky said in a dignified voice, "I am going to bed now. And by the way, a fly is it, not she." Pff, said Bridget, and shrugged, turning back to her laptop. Lucky, I cannot stop following this lesson right now. Go to bed. I'll I check you later. Be soon. Um, said Lucky, and got a look at the booklet over Bridget's shoulder. The top part was in French, so Lucky skipped down. Where underneath, where underneath were the words, certified course in restaurant management and and administration, with diploma from the. Culinary Institute of France in Paris. That was how Lucky learned for sure why Bridget was planning to return home. She was getting an an online diploma from some from some French school in running a restaurant. This explained all those times Bridget talked about how much she wished she had a job. All along, Bridget had been telling Lucky that what she really wanted was to go. Back to France and run a restaurant. Lucky sat on her bed, thinking this over. Some tears came out of her eyes, and she wished Bridget would, would come, not so she could sit on her lap and let herself be hugged, but so that Bridget could see what a sad and abandoned child she was, an orphan whose guardian was too busy for hugging. As soon as she began imagining the shocked and concerned look on Bridget's face. If Bridget were to see her crying, Lucky cried some more. HMS Beagle, who slept on the round rug beside the bed, came to lay her head on Lucky's pillow. Poor, poor HMS Beagle, Lucky whispered. When Bridget co- goes back to France, you will have to live with Short Sammy or with Miles and his grandma. I doubt the orphanage in LA will admit dogs. Sadly, lonesomely. She got into her hot bed, kicking the sheets away. Lucky lay on her back, her pillow feeling as hot as if it is, had been baked in the oven. She decided to run away very soon. If she ran away, Bridget would have to call the police, and the police would call her father and tell him she had better have a talk with Bridget about doing her guardian job a little better than that. Lucky liked the idea. That by running away, she could make people do things they they wouldn't do otherwise. Bridget was entirely wrong as a choice for a guardian, Lucky decided. Even though she had come to California right after Lucky's mom died to take care of Lucky, she was just too French and too unmotherly. She would have had lessons for some kind of manual on how to do the job. If they had online courses in how to manage restaurants, they should at least have courses on how to be a good guardian, or even how to be a good actual birth mother, which was a more entire, more important job than restauranting. Lucky thought that writing this manual would be a good project for her once she was grown up. The manual would be called Certifi- "Certificated Courses in How to Raise a Girl for Guardians and Actual Mothers with Diploma." When she ran away, everyone would be worried and sad, and Miles would miss her horribly. The thought of how much Miles would miss her made Lucky cry again. And Lincoln, probably Lincoln would be so sad his brain would quit sending knot tying secretions. Tears ran the side ran down the sides of her face and into her ears, which felt strange. She needed to blow her nose, but sniffed hard instead. The mucus she swallowed tasted like the biggest sadness in the world. Even the crickets outside sounded mournful. Drying her face with the sheets, Lucky turned on her side and flipped the soggy pillow over. Running away takes very good planning. She already had her survival kit. She thought of a few more items to take that most people wouldn't consider necessary for for survival. They were not things you can eat or drink. Were used for protection, or to get rescued, or to keep from being bored. They were things that Lucky's heart needed in order to stay brave and not falter. She sh- she would run away to the old miners' dugout caves, and stay about a week. Then she would see what next. 
If the rescuers and police still hadn't found her, maybe she would sneak back into the town on a sun on a sun Saturday morning, and hide under the porch of Dot's bubbles and beauty salon, at the back of Dot's house, to find out what people were saying about her disappearance while they got their hair done. Lucky arranged some permed curls over her ear to keep bugs from crawling in. And she was almost asleep when she heard Bridget tiptoe into her open doorway. "Are you asleep, Lucky?" she whispered. Lucky pretended to, pretended to be sleeping. She'd given Bridget a chance to talk, but Bridget had had more important things to do. Now it was too late. Lucky breathed deeply and slowly, in and out, and waited for Bridget to tiptoe away. But she must have stayed there in the doorway for a long time. Lucky had not heard the sound of her leaving when she finally did fall asleep. After all.